Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Well, welcome back to Washington, D.C. We are live here on theCUBE at Inform 18. I'm John Walls, along with Dave Vellante, and it's a pleasure now to welcome uh, to the show from Capgemini, a couple of folks, uh, Rachel Myers, who's Director of Alliances at Capgemini, <laughs> and uh, John Clark, who's the VP of Infor Practice at uh, Capgemini, and uh, Dave, put your phone away, would you please? <laughs> We're off to a good start. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you guys again? I think it was giving him directions for dinner tonight, I think what you're doing. It's down the K Street, uh, take a right. <laughs> don't drive scooters without a helmet. That's right. <laughs> Inside story. Uh, Rachel and, uh, and uh, John, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time here. Thanks Let's talk us. about the partnership uh, uh, with, uh, with Info, or Info, where it's coming from, what you are adding to that, how you view it, and what you're getting out of it. Uh, John, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, Hello from DC, as right. like you said. Um, the, the relationship that Capgemini has had with Infor goes back over 20 years, uh, but we formalized it really two years ago and had a uh, strategic partnership defined around several of the, the products that Infor has with a big focus on digital and cloud. So Capgemini uh, sees that Infor is really leading the charge on a lot of native cloud products out there, and uh, we know that that is uh, certainly something our clients are looking for. So formalized relationship and uh, extremely excited to be uh, lead partners and um, sponsors here at Inform. And, and so Rachel, where do you come into play here then as far as director of alliances goes? I mean, I think the job title probably speaks for itself, but in terms of how the Infor relationship works and, and where it comes in to your portfolio, to your, onto your plate, how does that work? So I manage the relationship with Infor. Uh, as our customers are looking at cloud and all the options out there, I manage the, the relationship into Infor, bringing the right folks to bear to our customers and joining at the hip where we need to in support of our customers. Okay, so you know you, you mentioned, John, that it's been a 20-year relationship, so that means it goes back probably to the Lawson software days, right, and the, the whole early days of ERP. Now we come into the modern era, the cloud, we're hearing all about AI. Um, we're also hearing about sort of micro verticals and yes. industry expertise. Yes. So how, square that circle for me, because you guys have deep industry expertise how do you mesh with Infor? Yeah, I, great, great question. We um, absolutely, as you said, go to market from a sector perspective. So everything that uh, we do has some tint of uh, an industry or a, a sector verticalization, and uh, it matches exactly well with how N4 goes to market with last mile functionality. So what we do, for example, is um, look at where they are, where N4 uh, and our sector team see gaps, like on food processing companies and we'll build out that solution and take that to market. So really kind of extending the last mile functionality within four and having Capgemini solutions as well. So does that functionality ultimately make it back into in four code or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Okay, all right, so it's, it's like last inch function, right? Uh, exactly, right? that's a pretty good analogy for okay, it. Okay, so, well, it's always the hardest part, right? I mean, you think of cable, you think of all the Telephone, sort of, whatever, sort of right. examples, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, the old story is if, you, if you're here and you want to get to the wall and you go halfway, you never get there, right? So, exactly. So that's yeah. kind of the process that you're in. There's always more to do, right? right? Right. Okay, so what's hot these days in your space? Well, we're here at Inforum talking to customers and our partners about many things, uh, but we actually are speaking about Industry 4.0 which is a big hot topic, supply chain and EAM, enterprise asset management. We have practices and expertise in all of those, so we can bring the best to our customers uh, from a system integration partner capability, which would be us, along with Infor and the products that they bring to bear. So what's the 101 on 4.0? Presumably a lot of automation, more efficiency, you know, driving business value. H how would you describe industry 4.0 next gen? It's the next evolution, I would say, to automation of processes. Um, we're getting closer, I would think, um, and people are definitely piloting to get there, but building a roadmap and helping them really see the value 
is what we're trying to do with our customers these days and making it real and really producing some ROI beyond that with automation. So AI is a piece of that. How, how about, have you seen like blockchain you know, hit yet or is that sort of on people's roadmaps? I think, it, I think it's definitely a roadmap item. I think there's some experimentation, but what we're definitely seeing become real is robotics process automation, RPA. We're doing a lot of that with our customers and taking it beyond experimentation to actual ROI. I mean, RPA is exploding. We heard, I, I was actually impressed and surprised to hear so much of RPA talk mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that Infor had you know, quasi out of the box capabilities there. So what are you seeing? A lot of sort of back office functions getting automated, software robots getting trained to do mundane tasks. What, what's the experience there? I think as we are implementing ERPs like Infor's, um, there is a need to take processes that customers are doing today uh, manual and automate those to see the extension and the ROI beyond just the ERP software. We do see a lot of it start in the back office, so a lot of finance and HR functions is kind of the, the first place that companies look for, because one thing that we do see on RPA projects is don't try to tackle everything, but you know get, get focused and get some quick wins, if you will, and that's really where we built our library and where we work with Infor. Is it fair the, the automation impetus is coming from the, the lines of business, right, which is kind of mm -hmm. your wheelhouse, right? It's right. not a sort of an IT thing so much. IT's probably a little afraid of it, but but is that is that, that the way that you is see fair. it? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, talk about uh, Capgemini's strategy as as the world sort of evolves. I mean, these you know you always hear small projects, small wins are the way to go. And for years, it was like the big SAP implementation or the big yeah. Oracle implementation. How are you guys changing your business to uh, accommodate that new thinking? So really on, on several fronts, one is uh, definitely the methodology uh, that we have and we see on projects is shifting from a waterfall to an agile. Um, so uh, much, much quicker iterations and cycles um, on the projects themselves and usually the scope um, it, it will start off with a line of business. Um, and again, if it's looking for, hey, I just need um, I improve the digital relationship I have with my customer, which can all, a lot of times just mean start a digital relationship with my customer. Um, so it's really, you know, the, you kind of keep a tight focus on the scope and uh, just have an agile approach, which again is what we have uh, changed our methodology to support. So digital obviously is real. I mean, every CEO that we talk to is trying to get digital right. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of experimentation going on. Like you said, a lot of, hey, we have, have to have a digital strategy. <laughs> then you throw AI into the mix, you throw things like blockchain. It's a complicated situation for a lot of firms. Uh, what are the discussions like with, with customers? Um, where are you seeing the, the, the most success or early traction? I think having the vision and the scope of where you want to go three years, five years down the road, and being able to prioritize against that roadmap, what's going to give you the biggest benefit first, um, so that it's not just haphazardly trying out these technology enablers like RPA and AI. It is a clear vision and strategy of where we're trying to go and slowly um, hitting some of that ROI and seeing value. Are you seeing more a of a, a, a save money, make money, kind of a mix? What, uh, what are you seeing there? I would say probably a mix. Um, save money for the right reasons uh, and spend money to you know, get the ROI that we're planning for in that roadmap. Well, this know, what, if, if, just to amplify on a point that you're making, Dave, um, just from the customer side of the fence on this, for people who aren't, you know, you're just introducing them to the cloud, right? You're, to begin with, trying to, and they're trying to embrace or understand a concept that, that they don't have any experience with. And now you think of all these other capabilities you have down the road or all these other, uh, opportunities, whether it's artificial intelligence or whether it's RPA, whatever it is, it's got to be mind blowing a little bit, doesn't it? And, and how do you, yeah. I guess, calm them down if they realize we are that far behind? You know, we're never going to get there. We're always going to yeah. be three, five, 10 years behind because we're that far behind right now. <laughs> right. So how do you, I guess, allay their concerns and then, and then get them up to speed in such a way that they feel like they can catch up. Yeah, I'd say one of the key things that we can provide is uh, various maturity models. So we have kind of a, you know, keeping it simple of a, a two by two grid of um, where do you fall from digital enablement? 
A, a do, you, do you even know what that means? Um, do you do it within divisions or certain lines of business? Um, and then is that a part of the strategy for your customer acquisition, customer retention, employee retention, et cetera? And start with kind of a, a fit there, and then we, we basically have uh, offerings that then go from, okay, if you're starting out, then the approach can be, Let's go through what cloud is. Like I said, there are absolutely still you know, discussions that we have now on, um, hey, what is the difference in cloud and on-prem? Is it the same software version? Is it a different software? Um, what are the, uh, the security features in the data center? You know, some, some of those questions are still out there, as you said, and we've got to look at the maturity model to, to get them there. So what are the, let's, let's go through the simple, I like simple, the two dimensional. Uh, what are the buckets? So it's like, hey, we're not even thinking about it. That's kind of lower left. Upper left would be line of business focus, sort of uh, narrow. Lower right would be it's strategic, but we're not acting in, on it yet. In a, right, in a division or a single line of business, or it's a, um, I may have a, um, a cross-functional solution with a great digital roadmap, but it's in one plant. You know, because then you get into, okay, well that's probably because you either had, uh, you know, a champion locally, or you had some trigger such as some customer issues or production issues or something that forced the issue, so to speak there. And then the top right is, yeah, it's, it's part of the strategy. It's built into where the budget gets allocated as well, and it's a, you know, part of all the conversations they're having with business and IT. Are you guys seeing particular, th thinking about sticking on digital for a minute, uh, you seeing particular industry uptake, I mean, obviously you know, retail has been disrupted, publishing, you know, the music industry has been disrupted, but there's certain industries that really haven't been dramatically disrupted yet. Financial services, healthcare, defense, really to, to date, the high, these high risk businesses. What are you guys seeing and kind of where's the greatest familiarity or affinity to, to digital? Where we're starting and where we've been focused within for in the marketplace is consumer products and distribution as well as manufacturing. That's really been a focus area for us. And uh, we didn't get into this, but John's team has capability in Infor and is skilled in Infor, and there are some focus areas for us with the customers in those industry segments. Do you think that automation, um, AI, you know, improvements in the supply chain, uh, you know, robotics, even software robots, will reverse the trend toward offshore manufacturing? Tariffs, I guess, maybe help too. <laughs> but I mean, are you seeing any evidence of that? Uh, automation sort of making the pendulum swing back, or are the cost advantages you know, so attractive and is the supply chain so entrenched? Uh, I'll, I'll let John elaborate, but I would say that there is still a fit for purpose for offshoring certain things and for automating certain things, and that's why I think it's important to build a plan and a strategy for which things will be solved for in which ways. Yeah, and the, the one thing I would add is as you see some plants go from, it took 200, 300 people to operate a facility to I can do it with 10, mm -hmm. That changes the economics of, you know, now the labor cost and labor arbitrage isn't as much a function, but yes, what about the uh, rent facilities and transportation? So it does, we, we are seeing the uh, economic calculation change a bit for, from the point of, you know, just go offshore for labor. Well, if labor's not as big a point, we are seeing a shift there. Right, so the labor component's shrinking and then you can right. automate that. Is there a quality aspect or is that kind of a myth? Um, uh, we think it, that's a myth. Yeah. From, from, right. From so what quality mm -hmm. can improve a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Won't well, go yeah, down. You're won't saying down. coming back onshoring. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or are you saying offshore? Automating. Oh yeah. Okay, automating right. whether it's on or off. Oh, well, whether regardless of the mm -hmm. location. Right. Right. Yeah. Automation is going to drive quality up. Lower rework. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Robots do it a little bit better than us, especially if it's repetitive. Yeah, they don't get tired. <laughs> <laughs> How about you know, some of your favorite kind of joint examples with with Infor? Any kind of customer wins you can talk so about? We're actually working together in a lot of spaces, but one of the biggest ones that we are actually uh, talking about a case study here on the floor at Inforum is at Coke Industries, one of its companies, Flint Hills Resources. We're actually in the middle of an EAM implementation with Flint Hills and uh, working together collaboratively with N4 at the client. And, and is that the, uh, or bigger picture, um, you said 20 year relationship, formalized 
much more you know, recently than that. Ultimately, what does that deliver for the client, you think, at the end of the day? What's the power of that partnership? So I, th I think that um, there's, there's several things. One is that um, with the experience and history of, of a Cap Gemini with 50 years of consulting experience and strategy work, um, we now specifically bring N4 and N4 technology into the conversations that you know it would have been it, it it was not as structured before two years ago so now we specifically have where does n4 fit in the roadmap from you know a software agnostic industry perspective and then from a um, just a plain and simple support and keeping uh, your a customer's n4 environment running that's a additional strength that we have that we didn't have before so you, you guys are known for being technology agnostic, even though you've got an affinity for you know, going to market with a company, in this case, Infor. How are they doing? What's on the to-do list? If you're talking to customers and saying, hey, this is the sweet spot, here's where you know, some of the items that we want them to improve on, what would you say? I'd say for, uh, I can at least say tactically with my team, what uh, we are looking to enhance our solution is around burst and analytics. So that's um, you know definitely a best of breed tool in the marketplace. And so where we can integrate that into more products because it's you know N4 acquired it a year and a half ago yeah, or right. so. Um, so trying to fold it in with each product and keeping that trajectory. Where again a customer only has one platform to support for. So that's kind of infusing that modern BI into the platforms. Um, functionally, you're kind of happy with it. You know, oh, absolutely. And, and it's just yeah. a matter of getting the function in to right. Right. Uh, the Have suite. it the de facto. Right. That's where we want to get. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, honestly, if you just look at the uh, floor out there, you know, from our perspective, the, uh, the great showing and uh, the excitement and uh, just the, the conversations that we have around and for. Um, there's been some confusion, I would say, from um, without naming names, other competitors of Infor's <laughs> on you know what is their cloud and digital roadmap, and then when we look at Infor with uh, cloud native, you know from the ground up, it makes that back to one of the questions you had on you know where depending on where customers are starting, if you can go from the beginning like Infor has done with some of their products natively built cloud up, um, then you know those are those are great conversations, and we're seeing more of that in the market right now. Are you, when we talk to customers, well, let's see, when you talk to the sort of traditional vendors, they'll say it's a hybrid world, which seems to be Still. true. When you talk to other cloud guys, it's like cloud, cloud, cloud. Now even, even AWS is sort of somewhat capitulated, they've made some announcements you know, to do stuff on-prem. Um, but, but logically, it makes sense that if the data is in some data center location, it's probably going to stay there for a while. If it's working and it's a lot of it, you don't necessarily want to move it to the cloud. So do you buy that? Is, is it a hybrid world? Will it stay a hybrid world? Or do you feel like mm, the pendulum really is swinging to the cloud? Or not, because of IoT, it's more sort of a decentralized world. What are you guys seeing? I think it's uh, a customer choice. Uh, sometimes we have some federally regulated customers that are concerned about data and security and not necessarily there yet in terms of the cloud. And we have some customers that are wanting to go 100% cloud. So I think it is definitely customer choice and we are there to advise them whether cloud is the right answer and even to help them implement and support them on their journey. Mm -hmm. So I think we've seen all, every, you know, every which flavor of cloud, hybrid, yeah, from your standpoint, whatever you want, you, you're going to yeah. be a customer. I, I'd say in the, in the past two or three years, there's definitely um, more clients, I would say most now, will look at some, when they're doing their TCO and software selection, they absolutely will lead with, hey, at least the, the core part, the ERP part, for example, how, what can I do for cloud with that? Because there, there's just so much cost savings. Yeah, the consideration versus three, five years ago, no, you wouldn't look at that, but I do think there absolutely will be a, a, a hybrid footprint going forward. Well, and if there's, an, if, the, if there's an affinity to cloud, presumably Infor has an advantage there, because they're right. born in the cloud, at least for the, that part of the business, right. and other entrenched ERP is not going to be so easy to move to the cloud, right. if in fact that's what you want to do. And I think we share the vision uh, with Infor and talking to customers with a cloud-first approach. It makes sense to move to the cloud, there is value in the cloud, and 
we can help build that story for them. Charles Phillips, pretty, pretty smooth spokesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a clear thinker. He laid out the strategy. The strategy of this is my fourth in forum. I mean, it's kind of it's grown, but it's consistent, you know. And he he he, he presents it in a manner that I think is is pretty compelling. So that's that's got to be make you feel good, right? You got a leader that's committed been here for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, one other thing that I really do like about coming to Inform to see Charles is he actually gets it. You know, if you think of it from CEO of a large software company with hundreds of products, he knows where they actually fit and can go through right. kind of the, the roadmap and the story. Mm. So very, well, very credible. The uh, partnership's a win-win. For sure, it's, it certainly sounds like you painted a very good picture. Uh, we appreciate the time. Yeah. Thanks for being with us, and uh, good luck the next couple of days here at the show. Have fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate yeah. the time. Should be, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right? Back with more live in Washington, D.C. You're watching theCUBE.